Hey there YouTube, I'm Joe, you're watching my channel Ink and Iron, and today I'm back with another knife review of this knife right here. This is the Benchmade Osborne 940 in full titanium. We do have some red accents on here. Let's get to the tabletop so uh, we can get a closer look at this awesome folding knife. Welcome to the tabletop review of the Benchmade 940 Osborne in full titanium. And uh, yes, it did come to me in this slip case. Um, I believe this is for a double stuff stone from Spyderco. So it has like a fine and a coarse or medium grit side and uh, usually fits right in there. I think, I don't know for sure. This knife came to me by way of Sid, who is actually borrowing it from a friend. So uh, it's changed hands quite a bit recently and uh, I am lucky enough to have it on my table today. So like I would like to continue doing into the future, we will go over the um, specific measurements of this exact blade right away, and uh, then we'll get into um, how I feel about it. So first up, our blade length. Blade length on this guy is 86.4 millimeters, or 3.4 inches, that is this length right here. We're gonna move on to stock thickness, so that is this measurement right here, that is 2.92 millimeters, or 0 0.115 inches. Now we go on to blade width. I took the measurement right about here, right at the widest point of the blade, and that was 20.7 millimeters, or 0 0.82 inches. And uh, our steel today on this particular model is S90V, as you can see it right here. And uh, this is a tribute to Warren Osborne, the original designer of the 940 series. And this is a limited edition in full titanium, number 873. Okay, uh, and our last blade measurement is behind the edge thickness. So just here, right behind the edge bevel, is going to be 0 0.53 millimeters, or uh, 21 thousandths of an inch. So uh, about the same as a paramilitary two. I think my two PM2s are 22 thousandths of an inch behind the edge. Okay. So let's close her up. Handle thickness, this dimension right here is 10.2 millimeters or 0 0.42 inches. Handle length is 114 millimeters or 4.5 inches. And the total weight on this guy is 95.3 grams or 3.36 ounces, making it a very reasonable thing to uh, carry in the pocket. Okay, so let's get right into it. Philosophy of use on this blade, if you have seen one or if you own one, you know that it is a very nice um, everyday carry sort of knife. Uh, some of the models may flex into emergency tactical, um, but I'm not an expert on that, so uh, please don't take my word on that. I think this is a fantastically built everyday carry blade, and uh, I will tell you why as we keep going on. The deployment here is a thumb stud. Right, and we are using the uh, Benchmade Axis Lock. It is very easy to actuate and gives you quite a strong detent, as you can see right there. Really sucks that blade in from about this point and just keeps it in there. You're not gonna have an easy time shaking this out in your pocket or uh, you know any particular bag or whatever you're carrying this in. The uh, grind on here is a almost compound grind, so it's flat right here, and then we have a flat grind to the edge bevel, and then we have a swedge cutout at the top, and then we also have a uh, sort of Warncliffe or reverse tanto tip. It's quite, it's quite an interesting grind um, that I haven't seen before because full uh, honesty here, this is the first 940 I've ever handled, and uh, I gotta say, I love it and uh, I totally get why people have been carrying these. I am familiar with the Benchmade Bugout, and um, full disclosure, I think this is a better knife model and better execution than any of the Bugouts. Uh, that may be controversial here in 2020, but uh, you know, for me, I think this uh, definitely gets a win, and I may have to look into getting one of these for myself. The blade length being 3.4 inches makes it very legal in a whole lot of uh, US cities and states, so I gotta say, I enjoy that aspect of it. The behind the edge thickness makes this a decent performer, which I will show you in just a second, but let's talk about lockup first. Sorry, my hands are a little sweaty and I'm not quite used to fidgeting this knife yet. 
The thumb stud really requires a um, intentional forward flicking, so my force is traveling in this direction rather than at a diagonal, or some blades actually needed to go out. They need to go straight up, and that is what uh, engages this blade to deploy. Anyway, the uh, lock up here is very solid. It feels much like a Spyderco compression lock, just a little bit of side to side wiggle here, but up and down feels absolutely rock solid. And we do have a pretty substantial stop pin keeping that blade from traveling upwards during use. So very nice there. Um, my only complaint about the axis lock is it is dependent upon, let me see if I can point these out to you, Omega Springs. Do you see this little steel wire right here? That is part of a spring that wraps around this piece, goes around like that, and then affixes somewhere over here. And um, the springs tend to wear out on these Benchmade axis locks. It's basically their only weakness, as far as I know. Um, many longtime Benchmade owners are used to replacing their Omega springs, and that's really the only bad thing I can say about this uh, axis lock, because, man, it is very smooth and allows you to fidget with the knife like this which, I mean, who, who doesn't love that? Uh, I certainly love it, and it's one of the reasons I'm considering getting one of these for myself. Okay, now that we've talked about lockup, let's go on to performance. Here's that same sheet of paper I've been cutting on for days now. So yeah, this blade is pretty dang sharp. And uh, this is the factory edge, in fact. So uh, let's get a quick look at it. Let's see if we can't see, aim towards the light source here. I don't really see anything reflecting off the edge, implying no rolls, no chips, nothing like that. And we do have a very even bevel all the way across, which is excellent to see. Um, when you're hand sharpening as you get towards a belly, sorry, I know it looks like I'm about to cut myself, but trust me, I'm hovering over it. When you get towards a belly, you tend to um, raise the bevel up a little bit, that is steepen the angle of sharpening. But uh, as we can see from the factory, it is very evenly ground, very well executed, and even has a little sharpening choil here. So quite appreciate this blade style, and I totally get why people have been carrying these for uh, decades now. Okay, and usually I would talk about sharpening here, but seeing as this is a loaner uh, <laughs> from someone who is having it loaned to them, uh, I'm not going to do anything to this. Unless this is a limited edition piece. so going to be quite gentle with it, and I promise I won't drop it. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the handle material. So this is full titanium here, and it does have a nice uh, kind of dull luster to it. It does appear to be bead blasted titanium, has some very nice chamfering on here, right? We have a flat here and a flat here, and then a bevel that goes all the way around. Makes this quite comfortable to grip open or closed. The construction includes these standoffs, which keep it, I mean, it's absolutely rock solid considering these are full titanium handles. Um, one note about the construction, we do have quite a few body screws. So here you can see two clip screws, but then we have a body screw lying back here, which runs through the pillar, another one through this pillar, and then one right here, which I can't quite figure out. It may be holding the liners in, I think that's probably the best explanation I can come up with, is that it's helping to secure the uh, liners in here. Do you see how the titanium ends right in this outer circle, but then this stud right here is sitting in another construction made out of steel on the inside. So when you are working this axis lock, you are actually not interacting with the titanium, which I think is a brilliant move and very necessary on a knife like this. And it also allows the opportunity to add jimping on that steel liner, which adds just a little bit of traction here, which uh, feels really nice in the hand. I mean, it's very EDC traction. This is not, um, you know, a tactical blade by any means, I don't think, at least not in this particular version. But uh, yeah, it does give a very secure grip in the hand. I don't feel like I'm going to come off this knife especially because I can bear down pretty well. All right, the uh, ergonomics on this guy are very, very good. This does disappear in a pocket very easily, as you can tell by the compact design, and it's really not too chunky either. Let me roll in. This is the Para 3 Lightweight from Spyderco, 
and uh, we are right about the same thickness just a little thinner it looks like so it is quite a svelte uh, everyday carry knife in the pocket now if you're putting this in a purse or a bag obviously you don't care about that but I like to let my pocket people know let's talk about the blade to handle ratio let me see if I can get a good angle on this I would say we are doing pretty well the blade length is probably about 95% of the handle length so we're not messing around with too much extra handle here, which uh, I'm always a fan of. Uh, let's talk about the clip really quick. This is not a standard uh, 940 clip, as far as I understand. Again, I've never owned one, but uh, take a look at it. So it is a loop over deep carry clip, and it's actually rather small. So let me bring that Para 3 back really quick. And then here's a Paramilitary 2 with a Casey Lynch clip. I know it looks kind of funky, but trust me, this is a regular old Lynch clip. It just has flow mask as pattern. Anyway, look at the size difference in these clips right here. This is uh, Spyderco's uh, loop over wire clip, obviously, Casey Lynch clip here. And this is like a very petite clip by comparison in length, in width, um, not quite in how far it stands off the blade, but uh, I think that's very appropriate for this knife. It is just enough clip, just enough function without being overdone. And then when this blade is deployed, let me show you, it really doesn't interact with your hand very much. Like maybe my last two fingers here, but uh, yeah, if you're carrying left side even less cause your finger kind of sits in that groove comfortably, it's really quite nice. So I don't know if Benchmade intends to carry this clip over to their regular 940 models, but Personally, I hope they do. And uh, let's talk about a few other features of these handles here. They do have these red standoffs, which uh, stand out quite a bit on this mostly gray and matte finished knife. And uh, I think they complement well the uh, thumb stud. And here's something I didn't realize on Benchmade's thumb studs. Do you see how that's a Torx head in there? And it's actually on both sides. I think if you needed to, you could replace these thumb studs which uh, may be an option. I'll have to look into it. I'm, I'm just kind of spitballing here. Again, this is my first uh, 940 and one of my only couple of Benchmades that I've handled. So um, I do like seeing that though. You know, if you ever have a problem with your thumb studs, I'm sure Benchmade will be able to remedy it very easily. Um, and this may allow for some aftermarket mods, which is really cool. Um, I really do like these red standoffs as well. They don't, uh, get in the way, you don't feel them at all, so I trust them to stay red and vibrant and uh, just add that little pop of color on an otherwise very quiet knife design. There's a little bit of jimping on the back end here. I assume it's for pulling it out of pocket, and uh, since I'm talking about that, let me show you how this knife rides in my pockets. All right, it's everybody's favorite time once again. It is crotch cam. So here's the Benchmade 940 in full titanium. And look how deeply I can bury that clip. This thing disappears in the pocket, but is very easy to retrieve and very easy to replace. And uh, yeah, you know, I think this jimping would help some people to uh, fish it out of their pockets. Maybe if you were having a hard time, having trouble getting an angle on it, maybe you're wearing gloves, something like that. But uh, yeah, I gotta say, this is quite friendly to carry and uh, I definitely need to get one. Okay, now that you've seen that knife in my pocket, let's talk about ambidextrous use. Um, I am not totally proficient with my left hand using this knife yet. Um, I'd probably do better with the clip being moved to the uh, other side of the handle, but this access lock is extremely, extremely easy to disengage with the left hand. Honestly, it only takes one finger to disengage it, and then the uh, blade can be swung shut. And uh, I would say the access lock is maybe not the smoothest thing in the planet. You can't really add bearings into a system like this, but for everyday carry and um, a very durable sort of fidget knife that you wouldn't have to worry about pocket lint getting into, I think this is a great design. I find myself on a lot of knives that uh, copy this design to be using both fingers to uh, disengage that. So I gotta hand it to Benchmade. I think they did the access lock best and um, that patent has expired, so other people are going to try and copy it. 
and they're going to have a heck of a time because this is very well done. Let's finally get around to our price point here and I'll roll in some size comparisons. Bet you didn't see this coming. Here's the Paramilitary 2 and the Para 3 Lightweight. So after a little bit of research, I found that the MSRP on this guy, because it's sold out everywhere, so it took me a couple minutes, the MSRP on this guy is $400. That is what Benchmade recommends that retailers sell it for. Now, uh, I did find a couple of sites where it was retailing when it was available for about $340. That is quite a big ask for this particular blade. Now, let's keep in mind that uh, Benchmade fans are as ravenous as any Cold Steel or Spyderco fanboys you've ever seen. I'm not meaning to belittle them, but uh, oh my god, you guys will pay a lot for a Benchmade knife, in my opinion. The normal uh, Benchmade 940s are about $180, $190, which uh, is something I do understand for this particular level of construction, and uh, normally it comes with, uh, God, what blade steel? I think they're using like S30V in some of these now. But uh, yeah, I would definitely put this in competition with something like a Paramilitary 2, which I know is a little bit over 200 bucks, and uh, I think this is definitely easily competition for uh, Spyderco's flagship level of knives. Here's the Ultratech Honey Badger and the Steel Wheel Cut Jack, and this is in D2. 190 bucks, I definitely get this knife. This particular version in the titanium being 340, I suppose I understand it. Um, it does come with S90V as the blade steel. It is from Benchmade, so it's made in the USA. Full titanium handle, so you could have this custom anodized, which would be sick, honestly, if you're asking me. And then it does have this very nice loop over pocket clip, which makes it ride very deep in the pocket and is very friendly to carry. So uh, yeah, if you're looking for a, a very tried and true and tested design, I don't think you can go wrong with this. Um, my personal instinct would be to go for the more standard model at around $180, $190. Um, but if you're so inclined, I don't think you can go wrong at $340 for uh, you know, something with full titanium handles. All right, and here's our final size comparison here, the Opinel number eight, and then just a little old Victorinox classic. So, would this knife be worth it to me? Um, like I said, not this particular model, but I think the uh, standard 940s are now officially on my radar, and uh, I will probably have to get them before they get totally outcompeted by all the bug outs of the world. And uh, I know I talk a lot about the bug out in this episode, so uh, if you want to know more about that, I do have a video review on it, link in the description. Okay, and uh, that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, if you want to see more content like this, I am currently working on fixing some Victorinox knives. I have other knife reviews, multi-tools, here's my Leatherman Surge. So if you're into all this crazy stuff, please uh, give my channel a subscription and hit the bell to get notified when I upload new stuff. And if you like this particular video, go ahead and hit like. And uh, I do have a patron for those of you who are interested. I've been Joe, and you've been watching my channel, Ink and Iron. Thanks for joining me, and uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.